Hello there. I didn't see you come in. Welcome. Welcome to the 100 Days of Narration Challenge, Day 26. I am Edwin Tiang, and for today's book, I'm going to read Schoolgirl Milky Crisis Adventures in the Anime and Manga Trade. Manga trade. Sorry, I never say that word right. I always say it manga because that's the way that's the way it was for manga entertainment. Wow, are those guys still around? I don't even know. You guys, uh, you guys in the US probably don't know what, what that is, but uh, in the UK and Australia and the, most of the European countries, uh, manga entertainment was the premier uh, anime uh, dubbing uh, importer, exporter thingy deal into those particular countries. So, why was it called manga entertainment for anime? Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Just, just don't think about it. Just don't, don't, just, just don't, don't think about it. Uh, written by, um, so anyway, the book was written by Jonathan Clemens and, um, uh, basically it's, it's his story, it's stories about, uh, him being in the, uh, anime and uh, manga industry. So there's like, uh, let me read the blurb on the back there. There is no such show as Schoolgirl Milky Crisis yet. Schoolgirl Mil Milky Crisis, noun, a one, a silly name for a generic anime show made up to protect the innocent in Jonathan Clemens' long-running insider column about the Japanese comics and cartoons business. Noun number two, a hugely entertaining compendium of nearly two decades of writings from Jonathan Clements' man manga, damn it, I'm going to say that, say that wrong every single time, manga and anime translator, sometimes voice actor, and co-author of the best-selling Anime Encyclopedia. Winning, mixing cultural commentary, insights into classic manga and anime titles, interviews with Jap- uh, with ja uh, Jap- Japunas? For some reason, for a second there, I just could not say the word Japan. Japan's top creators and hilarious insider stories from the anime trade, Clements is your guide to this fascinating and often very strange world, with new illustrations from fan-favorite artist Steve Kyle. Steve, no, uh, Steve Kite. That's a C-Y-T-E. Sorry, I, 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 uh, thought that T at the end was actually L. Steve, Ki Steve, Steve Kite. I, I don't, I, I don't actually know who that is is at all <clears throat> so uh anyway uh i'm going to just go and um pick a random page of this so let's do that uh, it's all um as expected it's all short story that's not the right word to use short stories uh although i guess it is articles articles so uh each article would have its own title so uh let's have a look at page page 172 which is an article written on let's have a look article written on bubble fictions anime and the credit and the credit crunch oh god no i hate that word i honestly hate the word credit it's uh it's just i don't know it just comes out as credit 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 so i i, I lose the i in there somehow i don't know it's credit and and the e as well so it's c r d t so it's basically the word credit, but it's just I I saw I saw like a big in the word. Anyway, page one hundred seventy two, which starts in the middle of a sentence and ends in the middle of a sentence every single time. God damn it! Let's just let's just let's just let's just let's just, let's just read just read just read. Which Ryoko Hitosue, Hirosue, Hirosue, I think it's Hirosue. Every, every, uh, every, uh, vowel has its own sound. So Ryoko, in which Ryoko Hirosue is catapulted back to the boom year of 1990 in a last ditch attempt to save the Japanese economy. The effect is not unlike Back to the Future, as written by accountants. <laughs> I like that comparison. <laughs> I should <laughs> Oh I don't know I don't know why that's so hilarious, but it is. Uh Japan's modern woes are tracked back to a tiny loophole in a proclamation by the finance ministry and hijinks and hijinks inevitably ensue. And hijinks is H I G H, which is um H I G H G uh, uh sorry, H I G H J I N K S. 
Normally, I don't see it spelled that way. Normally, hijinks for me is uh, H-I-G-I-N-X. Have I been spelling it wrong this whole time? Or is it actually meant to be spelled hijinks? Oh, dear Lord, I'm going to have to look that up. I've been spelling it wrong all this time. I could have been spelling this wrong all this time. Oh, God! Anyway. <clears throat> There are sly digs at the fashions of yesteryear, and cameos from whichever future stars the producers could persuade to play their younger selves. Most, no most notably, Ai Ijima, the future author of Time Traveler Ai, can be found dancing at a discotheque. Phones are the size of bricks, shoulder pads the size of helipads, there are tight ruffled dresses on body-conscious Tokyo ladies, and men wear suits two sizes too big for them. Well, I actually remember those times. I don't think it was just. I don't think it was just in Japan, but just everywhere. Zoot suit riot, riot, smoke. Ba, da, ba, da, da, da. Was that? Uh, no, I don't. I don't know. I don't know what era that's from. I always assumed it was the eighties, but I could be wrong. Zoot suit riot. When 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 does that come from? Ah, <clears throat> uh, where was I? Written by Bayside Shakedown's Ruichi Kimizuka. Ryochi, Ryoichi, Ryoichi Kimizuka. Bubble Fiction presents a fantasy view of the 1990s, in which people literally gave away money in the streets. Taxis need to be hailed with 10,000 yen note. Wow. And champagne flows freely amongst, freely among the party set. <clears throat> but is, but there is also a sense of impending doom. It's here, as Tokyo land, as Tokyo... As Tokyo land prices? Oh, Tokyo land prices, sorry. It's here as Tokyo land prices soared to, soared to silly heights that the seeds were sown of, of economic collapse. The bubble, warms some pundits, was sure to burst, bringing disaster on the hedonistic Japanese. Creatively, the bubble years have a lot to answer for. Outside Japan, the economic might of Japan led Hollywood to make black rain and rising sun. The great growth and wealth among the Japanese turned them into owners of video players, and hence helped them drive the modern anime industry. The idea of a future economic implosion even gave a name to its fame. Sorry, the idea of a future economic implosion even gave us the name of a famous anime, Bubblegum Crisis. Deep pockets nurtured the garage kit and figurine industries. Deep pockets nurtured the garage kit and figurine industries. The largest disposable income of all turned out to be in the hands of the charmingly named Parasite Singles. Wow. Twenty-something women living rent-free with their parents. Hence a similar emphasis on bespoke cute. Really? It's, it's blamed on twenty-something women? They're the ones who... who uh... Okay, whatever. Hello Kitty might have been around long before the bubble, but she certainly achieved megastar status with the help of those yen at, with nowhere else to go. But let us also rem remember the indirect effects of the crash. With profit margins constricting in Japan itself, producers and publishers became more amenable to foreign sales. Anime and manga abroad, particularly, and the sentence ends there. <sighs> You know, given the size of the article, I can actually read the entire thing. It's only like um, one and a half pages long, really, if I if, it, if it's all taken together. So I just need to flip through pages. So that was the first pass. Uh, sorry for the long pauses in between while I ponder how to pronounce Japanese names, because I know how. It's just that I just sometimes forget vowels. That's my problem. I just I just don't do vowels right. <clears throat> So, uh, yeah, I'll read the entire thing. Why not? Um, uh. <laughs> sorry, just trying to get that out before I start again. Okay, second pass. Bubble Fictions, Anime and the Credit Crunch. It is a scene straight out of Evangelion. Evan, oh God. Evangelion? Evangelion? I've seen the series. I've watched the entire thing. Why do I not know how to pronounce that properly? Evangelion. At the offices of a secret government project, a stern-faced leader informs a reluctant young protagonist that the world is about to end. A clock on the wall counts down the seconds until disaster, unless, unless someone climbs into a dangerous, untested prototype machine and does battle with the, and does battle with the fates themselves. But Japan is not under attack from avenging angels. 
The countdown clock is financial, ticking away the moments until Japan's debts spiral completely out of control and the country comes crashing down, collapsing, collapsing banks, armies of starving ex-workers and considerably less anime in the stores. This year's big Japanese sci-fi movie was the satirical Bubble Fiction, in which Ryoko Hit oh god, in which Ryoko Hirosue is catapulted back to the boom year of 1990 in a last-ditch attempt to save the Japanese economy. The effect is not unlike Back to the Future, as written by accountants. Japan's modern woes are tracked back to a tiny loophole in a, proclam in a proclamation by the finance industry finance ministry, and hijinks inevitably ensue. There are sly digs at the fashions of yesteryear, and cameos from whichever future stars the producers could persuade to play their younger selves. Most, not most notably, Ai Ijima, the future author of Time Traveler Ai, sorry, the future author of Time Traveler Ai, can be found dancing at a discotheque. Phones are the size of bricks, shoulder pads the size of helipads, there are, there are tight ruffled dresses on body-conscious Tokyo ladies, and men wear suits two sizes too big for them. Written by Bayside Shakedown's Ryo, Ryoichi Kimizuka, Bubble Fiction presents a fantasy view of the 1990s, in which people, in which people literally give money away in the streets. Sorry, in which people literally give money away in the streets. Taxis need to be hailed with a $10,000 yen. What? Did I, did I really just say that? I just I just inserted random <laughs> money with a 10,000 yen note, and champagne flows freely among the party set. But, is also, but there is also a sense of impending doom. It's here, as Tokyo land prices soar to silly heights, that the seeds were sown of economic collapse. The bubble, warned some pundits, was sure to burst, bringing disaster on the hedonistic Japanese. Creatively, the bubble years have a lot to answer for. Outside Japan, the economic might of Japan led Hollywood to make Black Rain and Rising Sun. The great growth and wealth among the Japanese turned them into owners of video players and hence helped drive the modern anime industry. The idea of a future economic, economic implosion even gave us the name of a famous anime, Bub Bubblegum Crisis. <clears throat> Ugh, my throat is icky, sorry. Deep pockets nurtured the garage kit and figurine industries. The largest disposable income of all turned out to be in the hands of the charmingly named Parasite Singles, 20-something women living rent-free with their parents, hence a similar emphasis on bespoke cute. Hello Kitty might have been around long before the bubble, but she certainly achieved megastar status with the help of all those yen with nowhere else to go. With all those yen with nowhere else to go. But let us also remember the indirect effects of the crash. With profit margins reduced, uh, with profit margins constricting in Japan itself, producers and publishers became more amenable to foreign sales. Anime and manga abroad, particularly in America, are another side effect of the boom and bust. In America, are another side effect of the boom and bust, and a generation on. The fact that the American market plays such a great part in the Japanese business mud. Mm. Uh, again, inserting random words which are not actually in there. Are another side effect of the boom and bust. And a generation on, the fact that the American market plays such a great part in Japanese business decisions is, at least in part, a result of deals done in the bubble period. But what if the American economy starts to slump? Oh boy, <laughs> that's a bit prescient. What's going to? Who's going to pay for anime then? Subprime days ahead, my friends. Then this article was apparently written in New Type USA, December two thousand seven. Ooh, yeah, just a few months. Well, yeah, just a few months uh, before the whole woo -hoo, everything going down. Um, good for the rest of us kind of, um, for us who like to import stuff from the U.S., uh, not so good for you guys who are living in the U.S., but, you know, for the rest of us, um, please continue being in an uh, economic crisis, because that way we can benefit uh, from your from your pain and suffering. And that's a horrible thing to say, Edwin. Why, why would you say these horrible, horrible things? Anyway, um, that was past two down. 
Uh, getting better. This book is really actually very heavy. Okay, we'll make this my last pass because... Oh, my arm. Why couldn't I pick an article which was just on the same uh, spread? Two pages. <sighs> okay, try again. Bubble Fictions. Anime and the Credit Crunch. It is a scene straight out of Evangelion. At the offices of a secret government project, a stern-faced leader informs a reluctant young, pr a reluctant young protagonist that the world is about to end. A clock on the wall counts down the seconds until disaster, unless, unless someone climbs into a dangerous, untested prototype machine and does battle with the fates themselves. But Japan is not under attack from avenging angels. The countdown clock is financial, ticking away the moments until Japan's depths spiral completely out of control and the country comes crashing down, collapsing banks, armies of starving ex-workers, and considerably less anime in the stores. This year's, this year's big Japanese sci-fi movie was the, was the satirical bubble fiction in which Ryoko Hirosui is catapulted back to the boom year of 1990 in a last-ditch last attempt to save the Japanese economy. The effect is not unlike Back to the Future, as written by accountants. Japan's modern woes are tracked back to a tiny loophole in a proclamation by the finance ministry, and hijinks and hijinks, hijinks inevitably ensue. There are sly digs at the fashions of yesteryear, and cameos from whichever future stars the producers could persuade to. Uh, okay, there are sly digs at the fashions of yesteryear and cameos from whichever future stars the producers could persuade to play their younger selves. Damn it. There are sly digs at the fashions of yesteryear, and cameos from whichever stars, from whichever future stars the producers could persuade their younger selves. I hate that sentence breaks. Persuade to play their... And then I have to go back to the beginning, beginning younger selves. That's why I need to read slower and read ahead. There are sly digs at the fashions of yesteryear, and cameos from whichever future stars the, produ the producers could persuade their younger selves. Most notably, I. Ijima, the future author of Time Traveler I, can be found dancing at, the di at a discotheque. Phones are the size of bricks, shoulder pads the size of helipads. There are tight ruffled dresses on body-conscious Tokyo ladies, and men wear suits two sizes too big for them. Written by Bayside Shakedown's Ryoichi Kimizuka, Bubble Fiction presents a fantasy view of the 1990s, in which people literally give money away in the streets, taxis need to be hailed with a 10,000 yen note, and champagne flows freely among the party set. But there is also a sense of impending doom. It's here, as Tokyo land prices soar to silly heights, that the seeds were sown of economic collapse. The bubble, warned some pundits, was sure to burst, was sure to burst, bringing disaster on the hedonistic Japanese. Creatively, the bubble years have a lot to answer for. Outside Japan, the economic might of Japan had led Hollywood to make black rain and rising sun. The great growth of its wealth among the Japanese, sorry, the great growth and wealth among the Japanese turned them into owners of video... Ugh. The great growth of the great growth of wealth eh, in wealth. Uh, I have no idea what's going on. And someone's taking a shower and now there's noises. That's great. Oh, let's continue anyway. The great growth and wealth among the Japanese turned them into owners of video players and hence helped drive the modern anime industry. The idea of a future economic implosion even gave us the name of a famous anime, Bubblegum Crisis. Deep pockets nurtured the garage kit and figurine industries. The largest disposable income of all turned out to be in the hands of the charmingly, of the charmingly named Parasite Singles, 20-something women living rent-free with their parents, hence a similar emphasis on bespoke cute. Is it bespoke cute or bespoke? Bespoke cute? I don't know that word. It looks like a word I should know, but I don't actually know it. Hello Kitty might have been around long before the bubble but she certainly achieved megastar status with the help of all those yen with nowhere else to go. But let us, 
But let us also remember the indirect effects of the crash. With profit margins constricting in Japan itself, producers and publishers became more amenable to foreign sales. Anime and manga abroad. Uh, manga abroad, especially, uh, particularly in America, are another side effect of the, of the boom and bust. And a generation on, the fact that the American market plays such a great part in Japanese business decisions is, at least in part, a result of deals done in the bubble period. But what if the American, <clears throat> but what if the American economy starts to slump? Who is going to pay for anime then? Subprime days ahead, my friends. News, New Type USA, December two thousand seven. Okay. All right. That's actually a pretty interesting article. Again, it's one. This is one of those those books that I bought and then just never bothered to read properly. Okay. So, um, that was day 26. The book was Schoolgirl Milky Crisis Adventures in the Anime and Manga Trade by Jonathan Clements. Um, seems to be a pretty interesting book. I should probably read the rest of this when I have the chance. So, uh, day 26 down. Tomorrow, day 27. I will see you then.